Very good morning, how are things? Welcome along to Wednesday's OTB. I'm at 7.36am, apologies for the slight delay, a few technical gremlins, but we got there in the end. And it just serves to whet the appetite for you to see Westmead's Adrian Barry and Cork's Colin Bubig on the show this morning. Morning, lads. Morning. Hey, and welcome back, welcome, welcome back, back, welcome back. Welcome oh, thank back. you very much. I thought you'd never. Uh, oh, thank you very thank much. Thank you so much, guys. Yeah, I was away. I was away in Sheffield for, for a few days. I was going to say we missed you, but you were, you were probably on more when you were away than you are normally. <laughs> I was. I was. Um, but that's what you got to do, Adrian. You know, when you're when you're you at something as exciting as the World Snooker Championship, you've got to be doing a bit of work, like exactly. Yeah, yeah. yeah so you yeah, don't yeah. have to take days off, and you can sort this of. Like... Is, you've nailed it. <laughs> you've nailed that. Your first rodeo, is not it? My first rodeo. Um, ah, it was a lot of fun. I have to say. Yeah. Um, seeing Always. Ronnie O'Sullivan in person at the Crucible. Yeah. I've seen him. I've, I've seen Ronnie play exhibitions before, but um, never in competition. Never in competition. Ah. So that was a, that was an experience and a half. I have to say, uh, just the atmosphere. Rob Walker's introduction for him. The the fever pitch atmosphere in the crowd. There's just there's just a, an aura about the man. Um, uh, met him. Met up with him yesterday briefly at the stage door of the Crucible when he was leaving after the the morning session. Um, I was thinking, well, is this man going to remember me? Because I've spoken to him a couple of times over the years, and uh, I was walking to his car. Didn't stop for any of the fans waiting for autographs because, to be fair, there's a lot of sessions over the 17 days. So if you stopped every time, you'd be, you'd be held up quite significantly. And uh, I, I didn't say anything to him. I was wearing a hat. I was chatting to one of the the security guards, Jerry, uh, at the uh, secu- Sheffield uh, Crucible door, who's a Monaghan man, originally. And um, yeah, R- Ronnie essentially just turns around to me and says, "Ah, oh, all right, mate." Runs back, little fist bump, oh. quick chat, goes back to the nice. car, and I'm thinking. Trying to play it cool, you know. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ah, it's just what happens. Yeah, le- leave it all uh, nice and laid back. But um, no, it was a lot of fun, I have to say. It's uh, it's one of those tournaments that I think everyone should go to, even if you're not into snooker, just ex- experience the atmosphere and the vibe of the Crucible. I've been to a couple of uh, snooker tournaments and they are not really what you expect. They're not. They're like, a bit of a buzz, like. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Like, the, you know, the TV experience is just so out of kilter with the actual in-venue experience. Because you can have your pints in your seat. People don't realise that. Oh, can you? I didn't yeah, know like that. You, the crowd can have pints, but it's, such a, but it's still a such a respectful great, crowd. It's not a great mix, is it? <laughs> huh? But it works. Generally speaking, it, you don't get... Uh, you're, um, Ireland, you're, you're, you're the 2023 version of Angus McAnally, essentially. What's the reference here? <laughs> He's, Angus McAnally was like Ireland's foremost... Um, I was just—I was starting to think about how that, that would be your dream gig over there, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Doing bits and bobs, but he was Ireland's foremost snooker expert for for a long time, decades. You see, this is why, and without getting self-indulgent, I think it's good. It—it it was good for us to have a a, a presence over there, Adrian, because sure. the snooker, the snooker is—it's not that it doesn't have the same luster as it had in the eighties, lads. Let's be honest, but um, none of the Irish um, organisations really go over and cover it. And when you think about how. Much interest there is mm. for snooker in Ireland, and maybe you only noticed it during the World Championship. Over the decades, where you had Ken and you had yeah, Dennis Taylor and you had Alex Higgins, I think like that obviously draws an audience, regardless of what's going on. And there's just not that at the minute. I know, and we have Alex Fergal O'Brien. We had Alex Higgins, Fergal O'Brien, of course, he was one. Yeah, yeah. Um, Mark Allen is is on course. He's yeah. he's eight all with Jack Jones in his quarter final. Watched a bit of him yesterday. He was. Five four down, and there was a bit of over and back with the two of them. Mm. With the possibility, the man would go six four up, and he he managed to claw it back. Yeah, he had to clear everything on the table, get the blue, the last red, and the blue, and clear all the colours. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he, he nearly uh, messed it up. He did at, uh, at one point. I managed to get it back. What's his realistic? He can win. He, he can win the world championship. Could he? he can win the world championship. Right. Um, he won't fear playing Ronnie O'Sullivan. Whereas some of the I look at some of the other players in that draw that are left, and they will fear playing Ronnie O'Sullivan. Yeah. Uh, Ronnie plays the winner of Xi Wei, the young Chinese twenty-year-old, and Anthony McGill in the semi-finals. Now Xi Wei gets through that one. Ronnie, I think, will spank mm-hmm. him. He's just not been in that situation before against Ronnie in a, in a one-table setup at the Crucible. Because when it goes to the semi-finals, it turns into one table rather than two. Oh, yeah. So instead of being that intense, cramped setup, it's it's just it's literally cavernous. It's massive. <laughs> What's your sell to people who wouldn't be too interested in snooker? Why should they watch this? Why should they watch snooker? Why should they watch this tournament, particularly? World Championship. I mean, it's... A lot of people watch it for nostalgic reasons, but the fact is, the, the drama and the excitement, whether it's 10 in the morning, mm. half 2 in the afternoon, or 7pm, you can switch on the TV, and you're watching live snooker. It's, it's 17 days But that's just describing what it is. But, I, like, we <laughs> live, I, we I, live I in a world of... I say that drama and out. excitement... I think if you're telling people to turn tune in for drama and excitement, you're going to leave them very disappointed. Yeah, sorry, uh, and we live in a world of content, full of content. TikTok, okay. what have you, Facebook, etc. All these popular social media so platforms. Young, people don't have the, the attention spans for snooker. That's oh. the problem. That's, that's what I'm saying. So what's the sell? But you can sit down and watch on the TV. Like, how long is it over the course of the different sessions? Yeah, like a, fra- a frame can be anywhere from 
15 minutes to half an hour yeah. more in an hour yeah um, tennis that's, that's is, tennis is the same problem too it's that's too long that's just like you need long. to have nothing else to do but like. also sorry I, I like outside of the people who love snooker there's plenty mm. millions and millions out there it's a world renowned sport and all that but for those who like aren't well the first the first thing is most people don't watch snooker because they don't know, understand the rules they're, they're looking at all these colours okay. and they're going what's actually happening here I, I, met, I met a fella in, in Sheffield yesterday in the taxi and he didn't even realise the World Championship was on and he's from Sheffield and he didn't understand. What? He was like, what's a 147? He, I, I was, we were talking about 147s and I was like, um, he, he didn't know what a 147 was. But if you explain the colours to people and the order and wh- what it means. I mean, Brilliant. Uh, what I would say is, well, Ronnie Sullivan, number one, uh, if you're sort of teetering and you're not sure what the whole thing is about, watch the BBC either ran for the first time or re-ran a documentary at about 10 o'clock last mm-hmm. night after the sessions were over. Steve Davis hosted... It, it, if the BBC ever produce snooker, something that's nothing to do with the play, yeah. watch it. They just do mm. such an amazing job. At yeah. it. Mm. And then all the living former champions that were uh, that were about, they brought in. Do you remember after Alex Higgins um, won it, he was beckoning to his uh, wife to bring down the, the baby. Uh, yeah. and the baby was there 82. and he was in tears and it was very emotional. They had the baby there. Uh, Steve Davis chatting to the now 40-year-old woman. Um, on the floor of the Crucible and uh, Steve Davis himself started to get emotional when he remembered the heady playing days against mm. there's just there's such a richness yeah. to that thing and you don't you don't need to be I'm not like um, I don't watch <coughs> a huge amount of snooker yeah, fair. so you don't need to be that um, and, and that that can that pulls you in it's a nostalgia there's a thing. BBC uh, Alex Higgins documentary Brilliant. I'm sure you've seen it yeah, yeah. it's absolutely amazing but that like that guy was box office, and so was Ronnie, and so were a couple of others. And Shane, people in the comments, they're interested. They love it. I mean, straight away, like uh, Noel Cattle asking you directly, Shane, is Ronnie playing well enough to win this? Hundred percent. There's no doubt about it. He's ten six ahead of Luca Brasel now. He didn't even come out of second gear, I think, in that match so far. Uh, and as I said, the draws opened up. He's McGill or Cedra away in the semis, and then you've, you're talking a final against Selby or Higgins or maybe Mark Allen. Mm-hmm. Well, Kenny Dad said it's a poor quarter final lineup other than Higgins and Selby. Possibly, yeah, but the sem- but as a result, the semi-finals I think will be will be fairly decent. And any tournament that has Ronnie still in it. By the way, Ronnie and this he revealed this in a press conference the other day. So we've, there's this long-awaited Ronnie O'Sullivan documentary that we're waiting on, waiting oh, yeah. on, oh, waiting yeah. on. Yeah, so it. apparently it's close. And Ronnie had the opportunity, I think, to, to see a, a cut version. They still need to cut 10 minutes from it before it's finally released, but it's very, very close. Mm. Uh, and what I didn't realise, Ronnie was mic'd up throughout the entire duration of the World Championship last year when he equaled mm. Henry 7. So even moments where he's having ar- arguments with the referee or saying things to players or, or even crying with Judd Trump at the end, He's mic'd up for the entire duration of it. So like, I think this is going to be a brilliant documentary. It's from, it's from creators who have made some serious documentaries in the past. So it's um, something to look forward to for snooker fans. And you didn't just watch. You have some content coming our way. Ooh. Out now, actually, on social media. Yeah, out now. Uh, check the YouTube uh, for the full interviews with... We did a bit of a backstage thing with Ken Doherty yesterday, talking in front of the the, uh, the Roll of Honour list and, and the hall where the players kind of pace back and forth before they walk out. Rob Walker, who's the, the MC broadcaster. Really interesting chat with Rob, actually. He's a fascinating guy. He's had a lot of loss in his life over the last uh, 12 months or so. He's doing a, a run and sli- a cycle from J- Land's End to John O'Groats or vice versa. Uh, to raise a bit of money and um, just a really fascinating guy and someone who, who uh, has a zest for life that's infectious so you should definitely watch that one and Jan Verhaas as well as I described him the Pierluigi Colina of Snooker the referee Jesus, that everyone recognises that a recommendation? Oh, it's, he's got the stern that look that is the worst book that, that uh, that. his yeah, book yeah, is yeah. the worst book I've Colina's book oh yeah, my god that, I haven't read it Christ. explain I why it was just you know the way footballers um, biographies at times can be and then we played Bournemouth it was a cold Tuesday oh, night no. my shin guards went missing uh, just before the game it was one of those and oh, it was brutal no. No. it was awful did, well, however much you could stomach it from a player from the referee not having it do us a favour we should talk football uh, OTBM with uh, Gillette Labs get the ultimate shave or your money back Neon Night Edition available now at 7.45 yeah. um, match last night is that where you want to start yeah it was amazing I mean really amazing like we have Adam Pope on after the first sad break to talk about it he was commentating on the game yeah I should say we'll have Shawnee Johnston as well talking talking the, the weekend's Ulster semi-finals Lee Keegan is on the show at around 8.50 as well we've got um, Anthony Ford 10 past 9 a name not familiar to, to all of you but he's a Wrexham player who is Irish so we're looking forward to chatting to, to him about the, the mad scenes at uh, the race course uh, over the last couple of weeks and the uh, promotion from the National League finally after so many years away but um, yeah as you said Adam Pope is coming up two points dropped for Leeds maybe? Well not with the way the game went Leicester should have won that match like really out of yeah, the, the two Bamford sides chance. I thought absolutely yeah the way it went but like 
one of the all-time great disallowed goals was scored by Yuri Tielemans at nil nil, which was uh, given offside very annoyingly. Like it was the correct decision, obviously he was offside, but uh, the the flick back and then just the nonchalant power mm. that Tielemans consistently gets in his shots is reminiscent of his winner in the twenty twenty one FA Cup final. Uh, so that was a pity that it didn't count because it was great. And Ali McCoy on Cocom's BT Sport just livens up any game. Ah, now, this game didn't need livening up, but he still added brilliant. to it. And do you know what he said in his Scottish voice? What's a hit? Just like himself <laughs> before him 20 He's years very ago. Natural. As yeah, a broadcaster. Yeah, yeah. Co- co- commentary doesn't come naturally to, to a lot of people, but to, to Ali, it's like he's just buzzing to be there. And you can feel that through the, through the screen as well and through the commentary and through yeah. his words. I'd be, um, I'd be worried for Leeds. Very, uh, yeah. I worry for them now. Like I think, just looking at them last night, what was it? What did it, Leicester score in seventy nine minutes? Something seventy nine. Eighty minutes. Yeah. Um, like in. you're looking at it, and I think like you're hinting at Colum, the goal felt to have been coming from a Leicester point of oh, view. Totally, yeah. And at least like, it is. You kind of felt it was a pivotal uh, ten minutes for Leeds to try and hang on, given that like they have Bournemouth next, and fair enough, that goes whatever way it goes. They have City, and then they have Newcastle back to back. Yeah. So you're having to assume that there's uh, zero points gained there and then they have West Ham and Spurs to close out the season. Now, they're not necessarily the uh, trips of our games at home as the last one is against Spurs, I think. Um, of the most daunting variety. But, uh, and you know, they could possibly end up picking up some points in those in those yeah. games. But there are at least two games in there that are guaranteed zero point. Uh, I look, they'll games. be gutted this morning like Raka had the header that outside of the Bamford sitter like that was yeah. a great save by Everson from Raka's header point blank range so they could have easily got three points but like they're sitting here this morning a point ahead of Leicester in 16th place and but I thought I thought the visitors were the far superior side and like James Madison nearly scored right after the Tiedemann's disallowed goal yeah. he came in at the Brilliant back post. Side. Madison is uh, he just really enjoys life I really, really like Madison. Do you see when he missed that missed chance, chance and he was uh, gesturing to the crowd, he was like, <laughs> just like that, like laughing into presumably the face of mass abuse and oh. he just laughed it off. And I do love a sports person who laughs at abuse that can um, just take the crowd yeah, on yeah, their yeah. merits bill. Leeds have conceded 14 goals, 14 goals in their last four games. Like that is just a slide that at this point of the season you would have to have huge concerns about and they also don't look like as if they've got the ability to score a huge amount up at the other end so for Javi doesn't look like he's Javi Gracia he doesn't have it like I I, and I know the Leeds fans like when you look into all the Leeds social media posts now you see the the ratio of comments and it's just Leeds fans hurling yeah. and like they've, they've had he's probably been a bit unlucky and Leeds have been a bit unlucky they've had a couple of key injuries late on in the season and that's definitely not helping things but they're a little bit I, you know the result last night gives an awful lot of hope to I think teams around them everybody's still really in the in the mixer I wouldn't like to be banking on them in the last day if they're even a point above the as they are at the minute above the relegation places you just need to be better than three teams so Forest and Southampton you'd imagine are in bother Southampton are certainly in bother they're going anyway, yeah. um, but Everton like, do you see much in Everton's Form you just keep feeling week in week out. Surely this is the week where they start to pull clear a little bit. I think I think Everton have at least one more win in them, possibly two. I said at the start of the season, my prediction was Southampton, Nottingham Forest, and Bournemouth. Oh, so I'm going to stick. You got to stick. With, but I'm going to stick with Bournemouth, although they're looking pretty at the moment. Five points clear, but. Um, and a game less played, or sorry, a game less yeah. played than Leeds and Leicester. But I, I think, I mean, Leeds, Leeds have just relegation written all over them the way they play, um, and you can see like, you can see the personnel of Leeds playing in the Championship. If you want to be brutal about it, you know, it it wouldn't be like there's loads of stars in the Premier League missing if they go down. And look, Leicester squad is no great shakes anymore but like you have one or two players there that will definitely get a move to a Premier League side if Leicester go down with Leeds. Sinister is a fabulous player. Uh, Somerville is an excellent prospect, mm. but nobody that really screams at you Premier League quality consistently. They have a lot of very exciting players, but it it would make sense if Leeds went down. Put it that way. I was listening to Adam Pope and, and they they have that "Don't Go to Bed Just Yet" podcast on Leeds, and one of the guys in the podcast was pointing out that you know the likes of Weston McKinney, who's thirty five million quid, maybe Leeds need to be signing players that are far less money than that because that seems to be the, the protocol that works for them you get bargains mm. that turn out to be really good signings mm. you get desperate though you see you get well, isn't that the thing do you know what I mean when I things think, are the slide uh, is on yeah McKenney was a good acquisition I think he, his quality shone last night he stood out like playing at Juventus helps but generally mm-hmm. over the season he hasn't been 
as good as thirty five million would expect. Last night really mattered. I thought he was I was quite good in midfield. It's rare when the team when a team is in the doo doo that the likes of an Evan Ferguson starts to put their hand up and say, Right, yeah. you know, we can uh, you can rely on me here, folks, I'm gonna yeah. bang you in twenty five goals a season. Yeah. Uh, but like even looking at Everton's run in, they have uh, Newcastle Thursday night. Uh, the Leicester game on Monday is monster. That yeah. could well end up deciding which one of those stays up. You have Brighton, which is at Brighton, which is probably a write-off. City at home, probably a write-off. And then Wolves and Bournemouth over the last couple of games. I can see a path there for Everton. <laughs> a would path you, to safety. Yeah. Mm. Would you miss Leicester if they went down? No, not not current Leicester. We all feel a little bit sort of... Can you, can you talk about nostalgia? It was only a Funny, few years yeah, ago. Yeah, I think we all feel a little bit nostalgic for that. But I wouldn't miss them. I looking at them like looking at them last night. Grand, they gave it a gave it a rattle. Vardy scores his first goal in six months, whatever it was, mm. um, which I couldn't believe when the commentator said it. It was like nine hundred. Yeah, he's not playing. He's not playing. Like no, he's, and he's doing well to stay at that level at that age as well. And you should, he near, nearly had a second. You were an Everton fan as a kid, so yeah. you'd feel a little bit. The probably would, a tinge yeah. of sadness. If and you've Coleman there as well and stuff. You wouldn't like yeah. to see that happen to him. They obviously got that pulled off the great escape last season. So Sean um, Dyche was a likable character as well. Once there's someone in charge who's a likable character. Neil Warnock was in the uh, press room yesterday. It's oh, right. the Crucible. Oh, yeah. He's over. He's, uh, he's obviously uh, spent plenty of time in Sheffield. But yeah, the likes of Sean Dyche, you don't want to see him going down. You don't want to see the characters going down. Once too big a club to go down, Shane. That's uh, yeah. too big to go down. Mm. Like Manchester United in '74. It yeah, can, one of um, one of a few teams not to ever be relegated from the Premier League, as in the birth of football, nineteen ninety two Premier League. Um, tell me this, Shane. Oh, who do you want to see go down? <laughs> um, Southampton deserve to go down. They'll be gone. Um, ah, you don't want them to go down though, well, because Brazil Bournemouth, is. Bournemouth are, Bournemouth are the Longford of the Premier League, aren't they? They're a bit irrelevant. No offense, I'm only wow. Mess. No I'm only mess in Longford. Wow. People. Jeez, I, I can hardly slag Monaghan is wow. seen by oh, many as, as, wow, wow, as, a, wow. as a bypassing point to it's just no Donegal, need for that, like, so. it's only a little slag I should have said Westmead yeah, Michael Kenny listening <laughs> in this morning I guess that about Shane that would be currently relevant <laughs> no but Bournemouth Bournemouth good luck to you if you, if you go down um, I think I think Southampton Bournemouth and Leicester if, oh. I, if I had to pick three and it's tough because I mean you want Forrest to stay up I, I think I think Forrest add a little bit of something to the Premier League hmm I mean, Steve Cooper's done a brilliant job. They deserve to stay up, based not, not maybe not based. Bournemouth on this are season, probably safe. They're five points clear, yeah. But I, uh, I, t- I could see them going down. I think Bournemouth are probably safe. Um, Colm's just w- sticking, sticking to his predictions. I wouldn't mind yeah. see them. Uh, I wouldn't mind see them go down. What about um, what do we make of the whole Tottenham stuff? The uh, the issue that came up yesterday, the the statement. I have the statement in front of me on Twitter. Yeah, well, well, yeah, a, as a squad, we understand your frustration, your anger. It wasn't good enough. We know words aren't enough in situations like this, but believe us, a defeat like this hurts. We appreciate your support, home and away. And with this in mind, we would like to reimburse fans with the cost of their of their match tickets from St James's Park. We know this does not change what happened on Sunday. And we will give everything to put things right against Manchester United on Thursday evening. When again, your support will mean everything to us together. And only together can we move things forward. That's sorry, I was just about to use a word there that I refrain from. That's just not true. To get o- only <laughs> together measures. we can move forward. Yeah. Come off it, mm. seriously. I mean, there are, I I would have several issues with the statement, but that absolutely well, give us your several issues. Come on, the nonsense at the end of it of we all need to be in this together. It's us and the fans. If you cut us adrift, there's no chance we can we can get out of it. To come off it. What do you like, want them to say though? Well, if I'm a if I'm a Tottenham fan, that's the last thing I need to be listening to. Why you're dependent on us, like making a bit of a racket in the stand to get your, you get stuff sorted on the pitch, and we'll be behind you. Like this is not um, I just that that stuff. I just they're damned right. if like, they do and damned if they don't. Because if they don't reimburse the tickets, and no, they're they're, they're not damned if they do. Because if they do get it right on the pitch, then everything just falls into place once you that. don't get it once you get it so wrong on the pitch you have to reimburse the tickets or, no or, or, I totally give some that. sort of no, a gesture no, no. No. I think oh, this no, idea of the, the, the reimbursement stuff is ah, I have it here in the notes dangerous precedent question mark it's not a dangerous pre- I, it, why, totally, why? I, it's crazy right Arsenal it did it with the last day to because where, where do you stop like but loads of teams have done it over the years hold on last weekend with under the radar one of the worst Premier League games to ever happen in Setters Park. Crystal Palace nil, Everton nil. Yeah. I watched back the highlights match of the day. They tried their best. God love them. I felt sorry for the editor. <laughs> the chances were like, do you ever play football manager or championship manager back in the day? And every time it appears on the screen, the 2D thing, it's like, okay, this is going to be a chance, right? Mm. And sometimes it goes over and wide, way, wait, or a FIFA replay if you're playing the console. It was like, 
bare minimum stuff of that. Like, oh. there, not, how does nothing happen for 90 plus minutes? Now, you could argue, oh, sorry about that. That was absolutely shocking. And apologies to the Everton fans for travelling down south. We'll reimburse you because that was terrible. Mm. Yeah. I, Both I teams think picked up a point so that you don't have to reimburse anything. But I think they've embarrassed the themselves. Shocking. I think they've embarrassed themselves as a club with this nonsense. And by the way, it looks like it was player led by all accounts from the statement. It, did, it looked like as if this wasn't a central sort of a we, we better go and um, pay the players. Pay the fans back. That makes sense, does like it not? Pay, like, pay those fans back. That, that oh, I just to think you're, that. it's <clears throat> embarrassing. Like they that's spent not their the hard-earned money to go to this match. But up the, in Newcastle, the, was it Cameron that was with us on the Friday Fire Pit where we were discussing this last week? And he said that's not the way fandom works. You're not entitled to a refund if your team don't show up. Yeah, it was Cameron. Yeah, yeah. and, and you're you're supposed to right. support your your team through thick and thin. I get that. And actually, to see some of the Spurs fans leave after 21 minutes was ridiculous. I think you shouldn't be leaving after 21 minutes. Look at look at. Okay. I, I, but it's a I nice was, gesture to get the, you know, the, the cost of the match. You know back. my view on on like if you pay into the game, you're entitled to do what the hell you want, right? Like making embarrassing videos, doing a mini commentary of yourself leaving the stadium is that, that was also really slightly embarrassing. But yeah. regardless, I think you're entitled to do what you want. And if you want to make a bit of a statement by walking out. Uh, I would say more what the hell were the team doing 5 nil down after 20 minutes yeah, as opposed to, yeah, like, I think you know. you've uh, nailed it Adrian you said they're just drawing attention to themselves here with this statement it's it's, and you're right like, it's it's, like, just, it's keep, another just keep your head down like. of, of the, a De Gea statement on Instagram or a hangdog Harry Maguire interview after they've just been beaten and they've mm. scored a couple of OGs it's but, another version of that and I just think nobody asked for it stop doing it focus on getting stuff right in the pitch and get on with it well lads can I just uh, for briefly stop proceedings I oh. was worried about him and I think uh, our community was worried about him. He's back. Bobby Dwyer, we hadn't heard from him. Mm -hmm. It's like, Bob, what's wrong? And he was all over Twitter, I could see him, but he's uh, written in this morning, complete bollocks from Spurs, but this is a spin from Levy, panicking that the atmosphere will be toxic in the stadium tomorrow, and I myself will be shouting, Levy out. Would you agree with the Levy out sentiment? Uh, right. He delivered this amazing stadium. Yeah. That stuff, uh, he, your crowd, he's both a fine of your squad. crowd are the same. You never hear about the Glazers when United are going well. You do now. And it's the same about... Um, you do now, I think. I think, I think now regardless... Well, things are not going well at the moment. United fans were chatting Glazers out when they were parading the Carabao Cup trophy around Wembley. I mean, that, things are going pretty well at that point. I don't know. <laughs> uh, the Mickey Mouse Cup. Mickey Mouse Cup, yeah. But um, I, I think the Levy out stuff is, is fair game. I think, I think I understand why Spurs fans would feel that way. Be careful what you wish for. Yeah, uh, yeah I mean... We were talking about this yesterday, Phil, Kathleen, Ger, uh, and Johnny. The thing about Levy is like he's, I suppose, uh, morally slightly better off maybe than other club owners in the Premier League. But at the same time, he jumped at the Super League when there was an opportunity to list like that. Mm. He was like, yeah, don't mind the Premier League. So he, he ain't so clean. But um, I wonder, I wonder is the grass definitely greener without Levy? It's just I, I'm I'm just putting it out there. He gets getting an awful lot of criticism. Seems to me he's trying his best. He doesn't have this effervescent personality. He doesn't talk much in public. Doesn't look great when he doesn't do that. Uh, doesn't need to though, does he? I don't know. You're he, not he's, expected he's, he's to deliver this incredible stadium that I don't think um, should be unmentioned at the very least. Does Spurs still get top four? I don't think it should be unmentioned. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Got to be mentioned. Uh, I don't think they can. Can they? I I mean I think it, the well, top four is pretty like no more than I was saying about Bournemouth. Who knows. It's uh, City, week? Arsenal, Newcastle, and Man United. I think it? that's the way it finishes. Yeah, because Aston Villa, United, have Villa, three Villa, games. Villa, to Villa, Villa, Villa are not, Villa are not running. Yeah. Villa's form. No, they aren't running. They're absolutely. They're in the five points behind, four, and they've three. Uh, three games United more have played. played three games less, so that's surely come on now. Even if United got four points out of those, Tottenham are not. They're, Tottenham are six points behind with two more games played in United. That's mm. the top four is signed and sealed. Yeah. Oh jeez, I don't know. Villa like. Villa are coming Villa, in Villa have only now. five matches left they've only 15 more points to play for they're just running out of time I, your man has done an unbelievable job he was 15th they were 15th when Emery came in ah. like just an incredible job they've done and yeah. like every week that passes I know this point's been made but it does it does say to you Stevie G just needs to find a role in punditry and <laughs> doesn't look good does he oh he kept Rangers unbeaten for a season Adrian yeah. uh, um, our own Stephen Doyle pointed out last night after Villa won again United play Tottenham on Thursday and then Villa go to Old Trafford so they are in the top four race like when uh, and Steve also points out here. Oh no, they're that not. Emery, when Emery took over, they were sixteenth in relegation. No, it doesn't matter who they, they're. They're currently five points behind fourth place with three games extra played. If results go their way elsewhere, if I'm saying that, that, I'm saying you, know, you go from sixteenth to a Champions League contention, like potential manager of the year candidate here, like and Stevie G, they like he must be looking on being. Oh not, my yeah, god! Are you, are you saying that Villa are going to Villa that the top four is not going to finish as, as is? 
Um, no, I think it will. I'm just saying that they're All in right. contention as a as an outside All shot. Right. By the way, just before we go here for the ad, Evan Ferguson, new contract. Oh, good move. Thirty grand a week. So it's what ten times more than he was on previously. Well deserved, well earned from Evan. I have to say, um, the interest from Manchester United apparently was real and legitimate. They really did want him, but they realised fairly early on that it wasn't going to happen. Um, but I think it probably is the best move for his career, isn't it? Staying at Brighton for another couple of years. I don't think there's any anyone that would yeah. really, from an Irish perspective, see that this is a bad thing at all. I've really enjoyed watching Brighton, I have to say. Oh, yeah. Uh, through the lens of how's Evan Ferguson getting on over the last few months. Uh, I, the only thing that I was surprised about was that this didn't happen. You know, he signed new terms, I think it was in October, October when he just yeah. turned 18. I was, and I'd said it over the last couple of months that when the form had started to go that way, I was kind of almost a bit surprised that he hadn't sat down sooner. So it's no great surprise, and it probably is the right move. Like, it's probably... I don't know what you're talking about, but what length was the contract? The uh, new contract. 2028. 20, 2028. Yeah. 20, so when so, that expires, he'll only be 23. Yeah, but he'll probably, he's not going to be there, he's not going to be at Brighton. But even if he was, just for argument's sake, yeah. he'd still have a whole career ahead of him. And the Euros, so, the like, Euros in Dublin that year as well. It's, what a year that's going to be for He's probably going to do another year at Brighton. Right, and that's probably about right. Maybe another two years. Depends on how it goes. Uh, yeah, if he's, yeah, if exactly. he's continuing the current form, yeah. the clamour is going to be out. The clamour was already big. The clamour is going to be off the charts. If his I think, form in years drops time. off next season, for argument's sake, then he might go. Well, you start to look at that point of what's the number, right? Mm. Like as opposed to what does Evan Ferguson want to do his career? Because yeah. it is the right thing for him as a player now. Clearly, for the next year to stay at Brighton, there. Hopefully, the manager stays there. Hopefully, that's they the manage to hang on to Matoma and some of the other players yeah. that are around him that are creating the chances for him. But uh, I think the glamour will just, the money will get so big probably in, if he continues that current form, he'll just have to. They leave. hold on to Casado and um, McAllister in midfield as well. Just yeah. keep the core of the team. And like you said, Adrian, Roberto De Zerbi is probably the big thing to stay. 100%. I have everything, like, he's in such a brilliant position and it's great to have uh, a potentially great Irish footballer again. Yeah, we'll keep, uh, we'll keep track of him. Ferguson, the hype train is real here in OTPM as it usually is.